Welcome to this session in how to fly an FPV multirotor in rate mode using FPV Freerider Simulator uh, as our learning environment. We've been working a lot on different types of acrobatic moves, and I do think those are very valuable uh, just for teaching you how your copter responds and how your copter flies in unusual attitudes and just getting you better at sort of thinking outside the sort of straight and narrow box, right? But the first time, if, if what you're used to is flying like this and doing cool moves like that, woo, right? The first time you find yourself in a car park, you're going to have a real problem. The first time you find yourself having to fly through race gates, you're going to have a real problem. So you, you see a lot of guys who have gotten some confidence flying in open environments. Maybe they can even do some tricks and you have a real problem with altitude control, right? Like the second that they, they start hitting turns, they start popping up uh, as they throttle up coming out of a turn. Then they're having to drop the throttle to lose altitude going into a turn and so on and so on. So there's a place for finesse as well. And that's what we're going to work on here. I'm working on the meadow track. I think the meadow track is a, is a good track to practice on. It's not too tight and technical like the playground track is very, very tight and technical. Or, of course, the, uh, the parking garage track. At the same time, it does have some altitude changes and some some variation in the turns, so it's not a it's not a complete cakewalk. And what I'd like you to do, and you've probably done this already, but I'd like you to start running the track. And in the beginning, I'd like you to go as slow as you need to go, in order to guarantee that you're going to get through all the gates. So one of the biggest mistakes that uh, pilots will make, and I was in a race this weekend, and I I did this. Uh, everybody does it. Is you fly too fast and you crash and it doesn't matter how fast you got to the first air gate if you crash and don't make it through it you're out of the race right you're done so uh so you have to be able to judge how fast you can fly uh in order to not crash i mean and what the chances are of you crashing if you fly five percent faster you know there's going to be a point where if you fly five percent faster your chances of crashing are going to go up by 25%. And if you fly 5% faster, your chances of crashing are going to go up, they're going to double or triple. And I'm not suggesting that there's actually a sort of numerical, like you're going to think about it like a computer. But I am saying that that you want to be able to judge that in real life and in the simulator. And, uh, you know, if all you're trying to do is, is screenshot a great lap time to show your friends, then fly, and, and you're in a simulator where crashing doesn't matter, well, fly as fast as you want, crash 100 times, get one good lap, screenshot it and uh you know tell your friends you did a great job you know there's a place for that but if you're really racing you really have to be able to judge your own ability and uh and something i do at, at every new track is is i will always fly the track slowly at first I'll learn where the trees are where the branches are what the turns look like and there's guys who will who will just go all out because they're excited to go fast or, or whatever reason and, you know, whereas I'm getting a five-minute practice run, right, they're getting one minute of practice running, crashing, and changing their props, and now their, their session of practice is done, right? And that's not going to help you win the race. So, you know, obviously the fastest guy will win the race, but also the guy who doesn't finish isn't going to win no matter how fast he goes, okay? So you can see I'm flying this track, and I'm going at a speed that I know I can make it, and as I'm going, I'm starting to speed up a little more and a little more each time, picking up speed. And what you'll notice is that the faster I go, the sloppier I'm going to start getting. I'm going to try and pay attention to the point where I start getting sloppy, and I'm going to try and just hold it there and back off and not go any faster. There's a saying, uh, I learned it in the context of martial arts, but it, it applies a lot of places, that slow is smooth, and smooth is fast. The smoother your racing is, the faster it's going to be. If you watch uh, F1 drivers, right, they are very smooth and precise with their motions, right? They accelerate and decelerate as need be, and they can accelerate and decelerate violently, but it is very smooth and controlled. And what I'm doing here as I'm flying, I hope you can see that it's very smooth. There are relatively few mid-turn corrections is what I'm going for. So when you're trying to judge if you're doing a good job, obviously if you're if you're hitting the gates, you're, you're not doing a good job, but the more you're making mid-turn corrections, notice my roll stick is 
barely moving now. Look at my roll stick and my throttle. They are barely moving. In fact, I'm going to exaggerate it now that I'm talking about it and I'm going to crash. They're barely moving. I'm making just the tiniest corrections. Now, I'm not suggesting that you would necessarily fly a race like this. You're going to be making bigger corrections during a race. But I want... Oh, there I go. But I want you to practice getting to a point where you can do that. I want you to practice flying as absolutely smoothly as you, poss as you possibly can with the tiniest little corrections that you possibly can. Anytime you're flying and you find yourself having to make a big correction, like let's say I'm going too fast, I'm going too fast, and I overshoot the gate, and I have to go back, I don't know, never mind the fact that you're going to crash. Even if you make the gate, right, I'm going to try to do it right again here. I'm going too fast, and I have to correct here, and now my altitude isn't right, and I'm going too fast here. Oh, crap, oh, I got I to gotta get that one. Oh, what a mess, what a mess, right? Okay, that's a hyper-exaggerated example. But you can see, any time you have to make a lot of corrections because you're not lined up right, you're actually losing speed. You're probably not going to make it up in, in enthusiasm, which you're losing in, effic in efficiency. Um, so any time you find yourself going faster and you start to get sloppy, so now I'm going faster, but I hope you can see that I'm still relatively smooth. I'm not having to push out of the turn, right? As I'm in the turn, I am... I'm pushing into the turn, but I'm never having to roll, see how I roll to the right there? I'm not having to do that. I'm pushing in more or less, but I'm never having to roll out, and I'm never making any big corrections. I'm never making any big corrections. I'm adjusting the amount of roll and throttle to hit the gates, but I'm going smoothly with very small, oh, that was not good, that was, see how that, oh, now, now, now I've lost it, see, I, I got going a little too fast, and I missed, I, my line wasn't right, I missed that one, and then everything went to heck, so the exercise I want you to do uh, in this session is, I just want you to go slowly and smoothly, as, as slowly and smoothly as you can, with very, very small throttle motions, and try to make smooth arcs through the gates, don't try and make a straight line to one gate, and then turn and hit the next gate, Try and make smooth arcs through the gates and start to pick up your speed as you go until you notice yourself getting sloppy and then just sort of hold that speed. Don't go any faster and get sloppier. You're, you're not actually, your, your lap times probably will not improve and you'll crash way more often. And that's not, none of that is good. Hold it there until you can go that fast and go and stay smooth and, and keep track of your lap times. Do a timed race. Do like a, I don't know, a five lap timed race. Yeah, do a five lap timed race and look at your lap times. Don't try and beat your lap times. Figure out about where it is that you start getting sloppy and say, okay, if I do a, a 30 second lap on this track, I start to get sloppy. And if I crash 100 times, I can do a 25 second lap. Hold it at 30 seconds, do 30 second laps. So, you know, just hold that speed and try to get smoother and smoother and more controlled. And you will get more and more finesse. Uh, you will learn to manage your altitude and your throttle and manage your turns better and anticipate the turns and set up your lines to just get better all around. And then once you start getting less sloppy, then go a little bit faster and keep working toward more and more speed. Okay. There is a certain point where you can trade smoothness for speed. If you watch the pro racers, a lot of them are doing uh, really sharp and what you could call sloppy turn turns, right? They're not these smooth, precise turns. They're like slam on the brakes, turn, slam on the gas and peel out, right? That's that's another level, and, and, and that there's a time and a place for that. But if you can't do it slow and smooth, you, you won't do it well if you try to do it sloppy and fast. And the real, the real truth of the matter is, those pro racers are not sloppy. It looks sloppy to our eye, but in fact, it's, it's really precise and really well controlled. Um, there's one more tip I want to give you, and that is, uh, as you're doing this, it's a tendency to look at the gate that you're trying to hit, and that's fine. But once you start getting confident in your ability to hit the, a gate, recognize when you're lined up correctly to hit that gate and start looking ahead to the next gate. So start looking one gate ahead. You should be able to hit the nearest gate sort of out of your peripheral vision, if you will, and be already looking toward the next gate. Like you're, you're just about to fly through this gate and you're already lining up this gate. And this will help your 
uh, you, it'll help you connect the gates together in a smooth arc instead of sort of flying through one gate and then turning to hit the next one or flying through one gate and not having the correct uh, velocity and, and, and angle to be lined up properly for the next gate. So for example, if I if I'm we'll take a really extreme example, right, I could get going really fast and hit this gate on oh, flying backwards. And now I'm not lined up right for that one and now I hit the ground because there was a hill and I was losing altitude going through the gate instead of gaining it and that wasn't good. Right? So if you're not looking ahead, you're not gonna do a good job with the track. Let me try another thing here. So here we go. Oh, I'm flying it. Right, I'm going fast. And, oh, see, I crashed that one. I wasn't even lined up right. So start looking ahead. And unfortunately, there's no way for me to really demonstrate this to you because you can't see where I'm looking. Now I'm looking one ahead. Okay, I got this one. I'm looking at the next one. Okay, and I got this one. I'm looking at the next one. I got this one. I got that one I'm looking on. Okay, I got this one. Got it. Okay, and got that one. Looking on. Looking on. Next. 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 And as you get more familiar with the track, you can kind of see that I'm doing it. You can start looking ahead sooner and sooner, right? And that will help you get much better at the track. Now, in real life, not every track you, will you be able to see the turns like this. And sometimes the turn may be a little obscured, but it's a good thing to do. You know, the more familiar you get with the track, the more you can stop, the earlier you can stop looking at the, the current gate you're about to go through and look toward the next gate and be sort of one step ahead of the game. All right, well, this is not a very flashy uh session this is a sort of a nuts and bolts session but i think it's a really important one because if all you want to do is fly up in the sky and do flips and rolls you know okay well that's fine you know there's a place for that but eventually you got to get precise and if you watch the guys who are doing really really fancy flips and rolls they're also incredibly precise flyers right those guys are not sloppy they're, they're making big moves but they're making them very precisely and so, you know, you got to get this side as well. Hope that's helpful. And as always, happy flying.